It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, they'll be coming after you uh, November 3rd. Uh, they'll be asking you for their vote. Uh, the point is, do we put them back in office or do we elect new people based on credentials? Remember, I always say, folks, don't vote for the person who you think has the greatest personality. Vote for the person who is qualified. Today, we have uh, Dr. David Moylan, who is the Schuylkill County coroner. Uh, and if you recall, uh, four years ago, when Dr. Moylan ran, he was on the Sam LaSanne show, and he said he wanted to accomplish a few things. I just want to do a little story for you. You remember uh, Governor Tom Corbett. Uh, I interviewed Governor, Governor Co uh, Corbett when he became Attorney General, uh, and he said he wanted to do certain things, and he accomplished them. When he ran again, he said he wanted to do a certain things, and he accomplished them. When he ran for governor, he said he wanted to do certain things in the state of Pennsylvania, and he accomplished them. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't reelected. Well, now my question to Dr. Moylan in the show today is to find out, did he fulfill what he told the Schuylkill County residents? Doctor, it's nice to see you on the show. Sam, as always, a great pleasure. Thank you. First of all, could you believe it's four years? I can't believe it's four years. It's uh, been a, a blink of an eye. I'm telling you, I just yeah. remember us sitting down and you coming yeah. on and saying, let's talk about what you have to do. But, okay, so the fact that you are a nice person, okay, um, that's always important as a coroner. But I'm always concerned, and, and I tell our people out there, vote for people who are qualified, okay? When you came on the show, you said you were certain thing, there were certain things that you wanted to do as the coroner, okay? So let's talk about what you said, what you've done, so people know, did Dr. Moylan tell us the truth? Well, Sam, in preparation for today's uh, meeting, I looked over my campaign literature from uh, 2011. And um, we haven't been able to uh, accomplish everything we set out to, but we accomplished a great deal. And I'd like to review that with you. Go right ahead. Well, one of the things, and again, this goes back to my campaign even in 1999, let's get the electronic computerized records going. And uh, although I talked about it in 1999, it hadn't been accomplished to any significant degree. And we uh, put it into effect in the middle of uh, 2012. And it's a program that's commercially available called eSedent. And again, what's modernized medicine? The, the field of medicine has been the electronic health record, EHR. So this is analogous to that. And the beauty of it is, it is very secure. It's encrypted. Nobody can hack into it. And it's available in the field. And many of my deputies uh, have these smart uh, cell phones. You can access it. And uh, we often get called to the same location. You can go back into the computer and pull up the records on previous visits to sa same locales. And that's been very helpful. Also, we can share record with our uh, medical uh, consultants, such as Dr. Bindi and uh, the forensic pathologists uh, in Reading, and it's been very helpful. How important is that to the county? Well, it's stream, it, I think it is also going to be cost effective. There's less secretarial time uh, needed when you can just, uh, instead of rifling through papers, hit a button and you can get reports like that. So that's... So that was uh, the electronic medical record for uh, coroner's cases. Now, the other thing that you might recall is that shortly after my election in November of uh, 2011, our main provider of autopsies, which was the Pottsville Hospital, decided to give up that service to the community. And we had to scramble, and we were able to uh, get autopsy services in uh, Reading, and then subsequently at Lehigh Valley in Allentown. But it was almost a doubling of the cost of the autopsy. So we were under major budgetary constraints. And uh, for instance, when we did the autopsies at the Pottsville Hospital, they were about uh, $1,080. Immediately, we had to start paying 1500 but we also had to absorb the cost of moving a decedent, a deceased person, down to Reading or Allentown, that added a few hundred dollars to the cost of the procedure. What we've been able to do through the development of 
a, a mobile morgue for our county. We've been able to bring the autopsy services uh, back up to Schuylkill County. We uh, once again have the services of Dr. Richard Bindi, who is one of the 27 board certified forensic pathologists in the state. 67 counties, we're a smaller county, but we have access to this uh, fine physician. And um, I'm gonna show you some pictures of the mobile my, morgue. My question to you is that when you did this, okay, and you brought the, um, uh, the mobile unit in, okay, how much of a savings did that bring to the county? Well, I'm going to tell you this, uh, Sam. Per, auto per autopsy. Going, well, uh, the, when we do an autopsy locally, it's less than a thousand dollars. Okay. Yes, yeah. less than a thousand dollars. So it's so it would have uh, been fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred. Well, oh. currently, uh, Reading and uh, Allentown charge eighteen hundred dollars. Everything goes up. Okay. So, so over the four years, it's gone up to eighteen hundred. We can do it so for if we about didn't have, half. If we did not have the mobile unit, you'd have to send them to Reading. Yes. it's eighteen hundred dollars okay? plus the transportation. Plus transportation. So yeah. you're so better we're, than we're, two thousand. You so were uh, under a half of what it what it would which cost. Which is a thousand dollar savings yes. per, uh, autopsy. per autopsy. How many autopsies do you have a year? Well, I'm going to look at that <clears> historically. Before I took office. They were averaging about 80 to 100 autopsies per year. Our first year in uh, 2012, it dropped down to 51. I'm going to tell you how we were able to do that. Um, then the last two years, it's been around 35. I don't have the projection yet for uh, 2014, but I'm sure it's going to come in in that uh, ballpark or at least under uh, 50 postmortem examinations. How have we been able to do this? Well, basically, when you're trying to figure out a natural death or an uh, accidental death, there's either guesswork or you open the body up. Traditionally, that's what it's been. We came across, in the medical literature, a um, technique called the virtual autopsy. I wonder if we could exit. I can sure. show you some sure. slides on this. Vertopsy, uh, the name is actually trademarked by a doctor from Switzerland but it's a combination of virtual and uh, autopsy. And this is uh, a photograph showing the technique uh, with a uh, mannequin uh, there. Uh, our technique is to keep the bodies in a body bag. Oftentimes it's sealed with the state police if it's a forensic case. So uh, it, it's uh, run through the CAT scanner, which takes about 15 minutes by the time you uh, do the uh, films, get the interpretation, etc. But it's, uh, and I'm gonna show you a couple examples. This was a forensic case, and this was a gentleman who was assaulted from behind, and this is the image of the back of his skull, and he was uh, bludgeoned to death, essentially. Uh, next slide. And then here is a natural death. Those areas that have been circled in red are a multiple hemorrhages into the brain. Basically, the man uh, suffered a, a stroke. And again, you, we didn't have to open up the, uh, the body at all. This was apparent from the uh, non-invasive CAT scan imaging. And the next slide shows uh, a mass in the uh, pelvic area. Those white uh, wing-like structures, they're the pelvic bones, the iliac bones. But right, right in front of that is a uh, mass that is actually hemorrhage from an aneurysm. We've all heard about people that die of a ruptured aneurysm. That's something that if you can detect while the person is living, the uh, operative mortality is probably about 2%. Wow. But if it starts bleeding internally, about 50% of the people uh, die, and that was uh, such a case. Now, I was there, if you remember, one day when you were doing a virtual autopsy. Yes, I remember okay. that, yeah. And I actually saw, you know, uh, there's a body bag, and, and I saw what you did, and you were able to determine it was a widow maker. Remember the, the guy who died? Yes, I, I think I have another uh, picture here, if we yeah. can uh, show that. Oh, well, th this is uh, actually an accident. Uh, what is circled in red are collections of fluid. That's all I can tell you is fluid. Okay. But uh, again, we were able to put a needle into the fluid and confirm that it was blood. So uh, the, a, a big blood vessel had ruptured in the chest and the patient <coughs> essentially bled to death internally. Now one of our uh, further efforts is going to be 
electronically determine how many cc's of blood are, are contained in, in the uh, body. So uh, again, that's something that is measured at autopsy. We may well not need to just open up these cases when we can determine it electronically. Mm -hmm. And the next slide, that is the Widowmaker. Is this uh, the one that I saw? Yes, it probably is. Okay. And, uh, this is uh, circled in red and it shows the arteries to the heart that supplied the oxygen to the muscles of the heart. They're just loaded with calcium and clogged. And then they go, and go And then it goes into spasm. So that's and, why uh, they call it the Widowmaker, right? Yes, and because it's, uh, there's something called the coronary syndrome or the coronary uh, system. And when you have that type of calcification, the first manifestation can be sudden death. You keel over. And, and that's what happened with that That's gentleman. what happened with that yeah. uh, gentleman. Right. So the, 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 f the fact is that you brought all this new technology, you know, to the coroner's office. Um, and in addition to that, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to say anything that's not proper or right. Um, you literally saved the taxpayers thousands of dollars since you've been in office, for, well, just with the autopsies alone. I believe yeah. we have. And um, I want to cite another uh, statistic. Uh, I inherited a budget that had been given to the courthouse uh, by my predecessor of so many hundreds of thousand dollars to work with. The budget that I submitted a few days ago is exactly the same figure. And um, the number of cases that we're now tracking electronically, uh, in 2012, we had about 613 cases or calls that we get notified about. And this year, so far, we're over 900. So we're doing more with, with less, basically. More with less. And I think it's just that we're uh, using the electronic health record, we're using the uh, technology and uh, CAT scanning, and uh, it's translating to better service with, uh, for less per case. Now, the other thing I'd also like to mention about um, the cost, one of our early cases was a gentleman that had a gunshot wound to the chest. We were down at the Reading Hospital. Our pathologist says we need to find that bullet. So we ordered three x-rays, just regular x-rays. They bring a mobile device into the morgue, take the x-rays. And the bill for that alone was $626 for three plain x-rays. We get that information from the CAT scan. It gives us a whole body x-ray, essentially, and that costs uh, us 200 Now, you know, I've been, uh, in fact, when I was running for Congress, uh, the good congressman, uh, Matt Cartwright in the last week of the campaign kind of intimated that I was uh, lying in my pockets with the, doing CAT scans. Geez, I'm and, shocked. Well, I would just like to <clears throat> set that record straight, mm -hmm. Sam, mm -hmm. because the w way I work the contract with the county is that we have a cap after so many uh, CAT, CAT scans, which I think amounts to about $18,000 a year. When we hit that cap, it's on the house. So I'm incentivized to do less. I, and I hearken back to something my old chief, Dr. Simon Kramer, told me. He said, Dave, if it's good for the patient, it's good for us. And that's how uh, we conduct ourselves. If it's good for the decedent, the decedent's family, it's good for us. So basically, um, you know, with, with the experience that you, you, you bring to the coroner's office, um, there's a lot more that you, you want to talk about. Let, let me, let's continue on with this because I do have some other questions okay. that I wanted to ask you. But of course, um, it, it's unfortunate, Dave, it really is unfortunate that when a person runs for office and the opponent, who is, whoever the opponent may be, um, certainly when they, when they sense that they're in trouble, then they start attacking uh, things that, you know, innuendos and, and, and you know, things that, are, are, are not true, okay, and then it's up for you to come back and say, well, wait, you know, this is not factual, just as you're explaining right now. No. It doesn't surprise me with Cartwright at all, no. because I, it was, uh, I remember that, and, and the facts, at least the facts you had, um, did not coincide what he was saying, but no. that's history, okay? What else right. did you well, want? The Our motto that we're going to have uh, carved in wood above the morgue entrance is, 
an old Latin phrase, mortui vivos docent. It means the dead teach the living. Mm. So every opportunity we can to, to learn and get information that are going to help the people that are living. That's our goal. But, yeah. but the term docent is Latin for teacher or doctor. And I've emphasized education as part of this administration. And we started with monthly educational conferences for our uh, deputy coroners. That's also open to law enforcement, people from the courthouse, uh, EMS, and uh, it's, it's really caught on. We have a cadre of very dedicated um, current deputy coroners. So that meets uh, monthly. Uh, this month in October, which is usually the third or fourth Thursday, we're bringing in uh, speakers from Llewellyn uh, Fire Company. Uh, two of those uh, gentlemen, uh, firefighters, 10 years ago went down to the Gulf Coast when Katrina hit uh, New Orleans and Mississippi. So th they have a presentation, we want to hear it. And in fact, on this particular one, I'd like to open it up to the public because I'm sure it's going to be a fascinated, fascinating uh, presentation. The other thing that we've emphasized, and this is in conjunction with the uh, state attorney general's office. We have an annual in uh, this May, or this a April 30th, I believe, for 2016, if, if I'm still around, will be our fifth annual conference. And we'll bring in speakers from up and down the East Coast, again, at no, no cost to the uh, county. And uh, it's a requirement for chief deputy coroners and coroners to get eight hours of educational credit. So this will satisfy uh, the coroner's uh, requirement. And we've had uh, coroners from as far uh, west as uh, Westmoreland uh, County and uh, up north uh, come down to the conference, our uh, confreres uh, in Redding, Berks County. So it's been very uh, popular and I'm proud of that accomplishment and it's approved by the Attorney General's office. And then, uh, the other thing that I'd like to uh, talk about is cost of the administration. We set the uh, coroner's office up at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute in New Philadelphia, not in, in Pottsville. And of course, it's a great uh, convenience uh, for me, but it's also in the geographic center of the county, which facilitates uh, families of decedents coming in for interviews, et, et cetera. So that's worked out. But one of the criticisms I've heard is, hey, uh, this Moylan's running up a fortune um, in, in bills for the county. Well, to put things into perspective, before I took uh, office, the county rented a, a little garage out in Branchdale for $170 per month. And you need to store files and m many other things um, that is important for the coroner. Well, I refinished one of the classrooms to set up the coroner's office, which is much roomier than anything the county had to offer. You've been there. Been there yeah. We have a, a conference table, uh, storage for uh, specimens, uh, secure storage for uh, supplies that the deputies need. Uh, we also have a, a large cage down in the basement that basically took all the material that had been in Branchdale, that's stored down there. And then on top of that, we uh, have the mobile morgue, which has uh, refrigeration for storage of bodies, which we didn't have after the Pottsville Hospital gave up the, uh, the ghost there. So all that st storage in the basement, the coroner suite, the mobile morgue, I'm getting the princely sum of $170 a month, the same thing that the county had been paying for uh, just uh, storage. And on top of that, uh, the other thing was, well, what did it cost the county to set up a mobile morgue uh, to refinish that suite of offices? Doodly squat. I, there was no charge to the county. This was something that I absorbed uh, as, uh, again, an improvement on my center. So, uh, you know, I do benefit from it, but there was no charge whatsoever to the county. The whole structure there, I mean, it, it, it just like everything is, is, is complete, uh, you know, you do everything there. 
you have the, the, uh, the scanner, the CAT scanner, you have the mobile, you have all the, the necessary things that are needed, you know, which, you know, instead of going to a garage and then doing this yeah. and bringing, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Right. So it's the same amount of money, but you're getting much more in, in return. Sam, the other thing is when I order an autopsy, you know, it's kind of a sacred thing. And, you know, we're going to basically open up a, a body that is someone's loved one. I'd like to be there for that. And when I had to run down to Reading or Allentown, that was half a day just in, in transportation. So, again, it's a great convenience to me to be able to observe the autopsies. You know, how, how important, you know, once a, um, a person understands what your particular office does, the coroner's office does, and what it means and how very important it is, and... Uh, Another show, where hopefully we'll have the district attorney, Christine Holman, on, and we'll discuss, you know, how these things work together and why it's so important to have a person in any office that has the credentials to go with that. So my question is this. How important is it for um, uh, a coroner to be, uh, you know, you're a radi uh, radiation oncologist, correct? Yes, okay. I'm board certified in the practice of radiation okay. oncology. And I must say, you're one of the top in, in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, uh, how important is it, do you think, for the people in Schuylkill County to have a doctor in the coroner's uh, office? Well, let me give you some other statistics. Um, as I said, we're averaging between 600 uh, to up to 900 cases per year. Fortunately, in Schuylkill County, we've only had about 14 homicides since I've been in office. So we're averaging three to four a year. And look, there's, so it's less than uh, a fraction of 1% uh, are homicides. Uh, the other thing that has me worried, again, it's maybe more a medical uh, problem, is suicides. We've had an epidemic of that. Uh, first couple of years, we were up over 30. Last year, I thought things were looking good. We were down to 18. But as of last night, we're up to uh, 23 suicides. Uh, and Sam, all of these are preventable. And again, getting back to the educational piece. That's what I'm thinking. We, the well, the we've been uh, blessed with some volunteers. Again, no cost to the county. Uh, bright young men and young women from area colleges. I'm thinking uh, one man in particular from King's College came down a summer ago and did a, a yeoman's job. At, looking at the suicides for about 10 years. We want to continue that study and get it up to, uh, up to the current um, date. But look at these critically and find out what factor might prompt somebody to take their own lives, because they are all preventable deaths. And my goal in the next four years would be to try to get that down under 15 a year. Education. Yes, working with the suicide uh, prevention task force, education to the public, etc. So as I begin to see this, the coroner's office has many tentacles here. You know, you, you're not only on one specific thing, but there's a broad scope as to why it's important to have a qualified coroner in a county and what it means in terms of oh. protection and, and, and help. Sam, 67 counties, okay? Yeah. 67 counties, and again, my specialty is cancer, radiation oncology, but I work with CAT scans every day, so that's been particularly useful on getting the Vertopsy program going. Uh, but of those 67 counties, only 10 have ph physicians, uh, MDs, DOs, in charge of the programs. Two of them are Pittsburgh and uh, Philadelphia, where they have the medical examiner system. There's 10 doctors in charge, but we're one of the few that has two doctors at the helm because my uh, chief deputy, uh, Carner, Dr. Joe Weber, has been practicing internal medicine, which is even more relevant to these natural deaths that we're seeing for the last 41 years uh, in Schuylkill County. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. Dave Moylan, who is the Schuylkill County coroner, and he's up for re-election. The election is November 3rd. And once again, I always ask you to please check the qualifications of the person. It's like if you have to have major surgery, you know, you don't go to a person who says, hey, this doctor is a nice guy. He tells great jokes and he has a beautiful personality. We could care less about that. What we want to find out is how qualified is he to operate on us? Uh, so we should look at our politicians the same way. 
Don't let any party tell you how to vote. If they happen to be Republican, fine, or Democrat, fine, if they're, if they're qualified. My question to Dr. Moylan, if you just tuned in, was he promised Schuylkill County residents certain things that he would accomplish as a coroner when he ran. And he's just telling you that most of those he's accomplished because probably he didn't get time to do the other ones, you know, because there's a lot of time involved here in, in, in the coroner's Indeed. office. And, and it's so important. When you're affected by that, then they really want to make sure that they have a coroner who knows it's going. If a person doesn't understand what the coroner's office is or like the clerk of courts or whatever, until someone explains why that's so important, then it becomes re very real to us. Am I correct? This is exactly true. And could I outline a couple goals Go right for ahead. the future? Yeah. One would be uh, to continue the educational efforts uh, and perhaps to get a focus of a medical examiner type style uh, department versus the, the county coroner one. So that, that I think could make us even more efficient. Number two, working with law enforcement, uh, DA uh, Holman, to try to put a dent in these drug deaths that we're seeing. That's another epidemic. So the suicides and the drug related uh, fatalities. Well, it's, it's a challenging job. And I'll tell you, I think, you know, what I've seen, you know, you've done and what certainly what Christine, uh, the district attorney has done is, is continually to be uh, educating, getting involved, getting people involved as much as you can. Uh, but your accomplishments, um, you know, really have a f good feedback to the Schuylkill County residents. You know, I think you should be proud of that, Dave. Well, thank you. And I, I'd like to kind of conclude by saying that one of the great honors of my career was to represent uh, Schuylkill County in the last election. And I would uh, humbly ask for the support of the uh, citizens of Schuylkill County in my bid to uh, run for coroner again. Now, you have a website, correct? We do, and I have one for my re-election, but there's also a county website for the coroner's office where we list what, what constitutes a coroner's so case. If I want to learn if, or if I want to see uh, some additional things which you've accomplished or you know things you're discussing here on the show, what is your website? I would uh, direct people to the uh, county or Schuylkill County website and just go to the coroners and that lists Schuylkill all these initiatives. Schuylkill, Schuylkill County, County website. website. And then go to the corner, corners area. Yes. Okay. So primarily you're looking for people to reelect you. Um, you've saved thousands of dollars. You've explained in detail about, you know, the, the accusations that people will make and you'll get them yeah. all the time. You know, you know, it'll be, uh, uh, it's a, and it's unfortunate we, we don't talk about our qualifications and what they really mean. Um, I, so you, you feel that the, it's important to have a, a doctor as a coroner uh, and you've accomplished the things that you said you weren't accomplished, correct? Yes, and again, 99% uh, of our deaths are uh, non-forensic, uh, they're uh, uh, natural deaths, accidental, and there I think the uh, position is best filled by a medical doctor. So folks, November 3rd, uh, you have a choice uh, in Schuylkill County. Um, please check all the credentials. Dr. David Moylan has been your coroner for four years. Um, see what he's accomplished. He's told you already what he accomplished. But the interesting thing is, he said he was gonna do certain things, and he did them. Um, I wanna thank the many people that I met when I was at the Bloomsburg Fair from Ashland and Monoy City and Frackville and Tamaqua who came up to me and, and, and said, you really appreciate the Samuel Sancho's and the information we bring to you, and I appreciate that very much. I always try to be factual, and it's uh, very nice to uh, see that we have such a, a great following in, in those areas. Um, on behalf of uh, Dr. Moylan, uh, remember to vote November 3rd, uh, 2015. We'll see you next time.